r slash ask reddit what are some stupid mentalities and mindsets that need to end the concept that both fault and responsibility can only be 100% or 0% and that if someone else has some fault it absolves another of all responsibility. Also if I may, that we should accept full responsibility for our pitfalls. Sometimes, it's not our fault, and we were set up to fail. Bad managers use this tactic quite a lot. They make calculated closed room decisions, and the employee is invited to accept responsibility for those decisions. If they don't accept responsibility as they've gotten railroaded, they're narcissistic, and can't take responsibility for their actions. Another good example are toxic friends that set people up. Narcissists. I will concede that people should own their actions, and take responsibility for those. They should critically analyze, and figure out their level or degree of responsibility in any given situation. Most times, it is within the spectrum you mention. Sometimes, it's 0% or 100%. But shaming people to take responsibility for everything is a way of avoiding responsibility for their actions. I feel this comment keenly because I just had to leave a job over this situation. Three glowing years into my career I made. My first. Single. Very small. Quickly fixed mistake due to, to something my manager decided on his own and did not share. But my manager expected me to take 100% responsibility for the mistake and basically yelled at me for hours for not apologizing fast enough. And then my manager totally ghosted me for several weeks afterwards. While maintaining normal contact with the rest of my team. I had to leave. I'm being persecuted when I am contradicted. My daughter would loudly protest stop yelling at me when I would calmly tell her things she didn't want to hear. She grew out of it, but some people never do. A friend of mine would do this when we were 15. I got so sick of it one day that I just went I'm not yelling. This is yelling. See the difference? The friends we were arguing in front of snickered a bit. I suspect they liked seeing her being called on hour because she did it to everyone who disagreed with her even a little bit. That if I change my mind or opinion about something I'm being fake or phony. Seriously, it baffles me that reassessing your position on something after new information is made available or after additional experience is somehow a negative thing to some. Paraphrased from a book series Stormlight Archives by Sanderson. Don't confuse hypocrisy with growth. I can fix this person who has hurt me many times. I don't get why people say I see something in them after their partner beats them. Like what so you see? A rematch? Usually it's not just physical abuse but mental abuse too. Often, they convince the person they are worthless and no one else would want them. The victim can feel that because the abuser doesn't leave them. They are good deep down. The human brain can be very cruel to itself when abused. That anything but perfection is a failure. Progress is often incremental and takes time. I have been struggling with weight loss for years, and this concept is something I am finally coming to terms with. That no matter how much I progress and regress, I have to look at the end goal. Little things may slow me down, but I just have to remember to try again, and not beat myself up mentally because I failed my goal. A recent video from CGP Grey covers this idea very well. If you're not 100% with us, you're 100% against us. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. My opinion is as good as your evidence. This, or that everyone's opinions are equally valid. No, the guy who has a PhD and 10 years of experience in the field's opinion is more valid than your 10 minutes Google search. I half jokingly blame movies for this wherein the professional with years of experience is always wrong, and the plucky kid with a dream is always right. You're entitled to speak your mind. You're not entitled to have people listen, comply, or care. Free to say what you want, not free from the consequences. Edit. Seems I struck a nerve. Thank you all for exemplifying exactly what was meant by the OP and my response. I faced the consequences of my speech. I said what I believed and received many upvotes but also many people mocking and disagreeing. Both of which are consequences. I also was not arrested by the government, which is actually what the first amendment protects. Stop comparing traumas. It's not a ducking competition. Learn to have empathy and take care of each other's mental health. I'd also add not to compare stresses. At work I have been stressed the hell out for many reasons. 
but other co-workers just shrug off my complaints with the phrases oh you don't have kids or are not even in a relationship. What do you have to be stressed about? I work part time on weekends and have a full college schedule during the week. If I ever even hint that I'm tired. One of my co-workers is always there to say something like you're only here 2 days a week. How could you possibly be tired? That just because someone is trying to help doesn't mean you can't tell them to stop. Edit. Thanks for all the awards kind stranger. You could even argue it's your responsibility to tell them to stop. Someone misinformed but well meaning isn't going to realize they're not helping if you don't tell them. Or they'll be likely to repeat the same mistake in the future. Yeah but there comes the response. Hey I was just trying to help. And get offended. That if you are a salaried employee and don't finish your work on time, you have to work and paid overtime until it's complete. But if at another time, you complete all of your work early and there's literally nothing left to be done, you're not allowed to leave and instead have to sit at your desk doing nothing until you get in your 40 hours for the week. Employees should either be paid to have their ass in a seat for 40 hours, no more, or no less, or be paid to complete a certain set of work regardless of whether it takes 30 hours or 50 hours. This BS double standard that you're paid to complete a task, not for a certain number of hours when there's extra work but are paid to be there for a certain number of hours, not to complete a task then leave when there's less work needs to end. I got into this discussion several times with my old boss. We are either hourly or salaried. We were all salaried. If he was going to demand that my team be in their desks at a certain time, I was going to demand they be out of the building at a certain time. Whenever I asked him if he had an issue w the work we were doing, he said of course not. When asked what the problem was then, he said others might think it looks bad. He was a little beach. If he was going to demand that my team be in their desks at a certain time, I was going to demand they be out of the building at a certain time. Haha <laughs> that's a great little snippet to remember the next time anyone beaches about people's arrival time. Assuming that people are not allowed to change their opinions or values over time, and judging people, famous or not, for comments made decades ago, yes, some people have patterns of problematic comments and behavior and should not be ignored. But it also makes sense that, for example, a politician may have learned more about abortion or healthcare or what have you and be able to change their stance. We are not the same people at 25 and 50. Or that if you change your opinion based on new evidence that you are somehow dumb, weak or your opinion no longer matters. Exactly. My sister is so horrible about rubbing shit in my face whenever we have a debate and I'll later bring it back up now on her side because I read up on the material. Like why are you doing this I am on your side now what's the point? It's so bad I refuse to tell her I've switched positions and will continue to argue the opposing side or just deflect the debate. Open bracket. We have a lot of debates in our family. We all like to debate but she takes the debate past the initial idea broadcasting everything in social media. My girlfriend and I literally had a row about this this morning. I was saying I don't like posting about the fact we're on holiday until after we're back as it's basically advertising our house is empty. Edit. You slash Stadler's Walder something has informed me you guys over in the states don't use the word row so to clarify it means an argument. Also it's pronounced like our not like oh cos that's probably not obvious from text. Edit 2. You slash Stadler's Waldorf salad. I agree, not even from a safety anti-theft perspective, but if you're online while you're on vacation it's harder to unwind in my experience. If something doesn't work 100% of the time, it isn't worth doing. People use this as an excuse to never do anything, or to deny others from trying. It's frustrating and holds us back as a species. Edited for explanation and to add quotes. 60% of the time, it works every time. Insert programmer here. If you don't listen to every song or know everything about a band you are not a real fan. And how recent you became a fan shouldn't determine whether or not you are a proper fan. I used to babysit a kid who, around 9, discovered Star Wars and was really into it. She hadn't seen all the movies yet, didn't know species and planets, or fan theories, or the names of all the side characters. It was a blast introducing her to that stuff. 
I told her the Darth Jar Jar theory and we watched the Phantom Menace to find evidence for it. I gave her my old copy of Star Wars Trivial Pursuit because my family had long since gotten so good at it that it never took any of us more than two turns to complete. And it was a whole new world for her. I don't understand people who judge others for not loving the things they love enough. If you don't post about a tragedy or support something on social media, you are okay with or don't support care about said something. Absolute cancer. I don't like the long copy pastas that say a lot of edge stuff and at the end says if you don't share this, you obviously don't care. I'll be checking to see who my real friends are, and will be removing people accordingly. Good riddance. It's always shit like like and comment if you like pineapple pizza. Keep scrolling if you're baby eating crackhead designed to be a one-sided shit chow. I read about it on the internet, therefore it's true. My grandma does this all the time to prove her argument and it always ends up being from some buzzfeed article. Drives me ducking nuts. This but also with they said it on TV. My grandparents aren't huge internet users but they watch angry political talk shows like it's their lifeblood. At any given time they'll be watching some yelling guy ranting and raving and if you ask to watch something else they're like but we're being educated. There's nothing wrong with yelling and these guys may have a point in their rants. But it's often just people saying stuff without any evidence or further explanation just this politician eats baby koalas and my grandparents are like can't argue with that. Abe Lincoln would also like you to believe he's not a baby eater, but he's never gone on record saying he isn't. Maybe he's too busy eating babies. This mentality of older people in industries refusing to train or teach younger people then complaining when younger people don't know what they are doing. I deal with this constantly at work. I'm a young guy in my industry and I am the exception to the norm. Most fire investigators are older guys. They constantly ask me why there aren't more young fire investigators and I always tell them the same thing. Because you guys made it so difficult to get into the industry by requiring certifications that require 5 years experience to get, require 2 core testimonies to get, and so on that no one can get into the industry. And then if someone does manage to break in, you guys treat them like crap, refuse to help them, and refuse to teach them what they need to know. There are a ton of critical industries in the United States that are going to have issues because the barriers to getting into the industry are so high and those already in it are so elitist that there's going to be no one who knows what they are doing left to continue the work. It's a major problem. Teach young people. Bring them in. Show them the ways. Don't be a ducking dong. I drove a passenger for Uber who was a real estate appraiser. She's close to retirement, as is everyone else in her office. She said they have a huge problem right now because within 5-10 years, most appraisers in the US will be retiring. There will be a massive shortage because, in order to become an appraiser, you have to train apprentice under someone for 2 years. No current appraiser wants to do it because it's a money loss for them. They pay the trainee a wage, have to take more time per appraisal to explain things, etc. Nobody wants to be trained because that's two years of low pay before you can even start making decent money. And usually, once trainees finish their two years and can work on their own, they leave and either start their own business or join another office. So basically the person who trained them took a two year pay cut just to help someone else's business. My husband is an appraiser and this is so accurate. Luckily he did his apprentice time under a family friend back when he was in his mid 20s so the pay was kind of a non-issue for him. Now the issue is he gets more work than he can handle by himself. But no one wants to be an apprentice. And he doesn't really want to be someone's boss. Edit. How on earth did this absolutely beige comment get so many upvotes? Expecting everything instantly. Patience is a virtue. You're not going to die if you have to wait in line. All four of my grandparents waited in line. They are all dead now. Quitting is only for losers. If you try something and don't like it, why keep doing it? Why not allow yourself to switch to a better major or try a different sport or get a new job? I mean, don't quit everything once it gets hard. But why stay miserable for a quitters never win mentality? Get a job you like. Do an activity you like. Edit. I really don't mean quit the second you struggle. I do mean knowing when to quit. As many of the comments say, I mean knowing when to go on to better things. As an example in my own life I changed majors when I saw how miserable the future seemed to me and how badly I was struggling. 
The switch was the best decision I ever made. It took me too long to not see it as quitting anymore. But moving on. And thanks for the silvers guys. Open bracket. And a bless up. Edit. Wow my first reddit gold. I'm honored. It's a sign of strength and stuff to know when to quit. Sometimes you have to quit or leave something to improve and move on with your life. People who oppose good things because I struggled through it and so should you. Instead of thinking good. Nobody should go through that if possible. Currently struggling with a difficult fatty baby. My mom refuses me any sympathy because apparently as a baby 30 plus years ago I made the selfish. Conscious choice to be less than easy myself. I mean. My mom said I was cheating at parenting by using earplugs in those situations. Lessening the sound of a screaming baby by 30 dB is a godsend. I can't change anything so I'm not going to try it. It's been agreed the whole world stinks so no one's taking showers anymore. Modest mouse. There is this whole work culture expectation now of always being reachable by email or text for whatever happens. A lot of places expect, and at times demand. That you be pretty much on call even when you're not at the office anymore. I worked at an ad agency where days off sometimes didn't even feel like that. Because I would still be getting emails about things and was expected to be checking them. I hated it. There should be some level of balance between work and personal life and I feel like that is fading because so many places are adapting this type of culture and mentality. Especially startups. Whenever I've had an interview, of decent quality, one of the last questions is if there's anything I'd like to ask them about. I've successfully taken that opportunity to mention my thoughts on this exact issue. Employment is a two-way street. If you expect me to come into work as a professional and leave my personal life at the door, then I expect a similar treatment in return. Of course emergencies happen and there is always an exception. But I work to live, not live to work. I've had to really set the boundary at work lately. It has slowly been improving but by just saying I'll address this when I get in next has been effective. If you don't like someone, you must be just jealous. If people hate you it just means you are doing something right. No, that is not true and gives leeway for all sorts of horrible behavior. Also, the things you don't like about other people are the things you don't like about yourself. It's true sometimes. But some people treat this as an absolute. That you need to stay in contact with all of your family members even though some of them are incredibly toxic. I cut ties with my mom about a year ago. But I'm too afraid to talk about it for fear of being judged or the social stigma around it. That being said, my life is much less stressful and I still think it was the right choice. It's been over a decade since I talked to my mother. My life is better in every way. You know what's best for you. I get it, though, I've felt judged because of this. In fact, it would have been 20 plus years if my ex-wife hadn't convinced me to talk to her again based upon her misunderstanding of that relationship. She regretted it almost instantly, and it took me a year to shake her back off. Everybody that doesn't get along with you or agree with you is toxic. People are starting to expect being around nobody but people that agree with them. Like a constant feedback bubble on social media. But in real life. There is nothing wrong with separating yourself from people who you don't get along with. However, you should not do so simply because they don't share your opinion on some things. You need friends who will call you a dunt if you're being a dunt. In my opinion at least. Just because I'm young doesn't mean I don't need sufficient sleep. Just because I'm young doesn't mean I spend all of my money recklessly and need to work overtime every weekend. Just because I'm young doesn't mean I don't want to relax at home on my time off. I hear a lot of shit at work because I work with mostly older people. I budget my money wisely and in a sense I also budget my time. Apparently those concepts are hard to understand. I feel you. So. Hard. And older. Retired person once told me at the street, I was sitting there, on some stairs, eating a bagel, that I am the scum that needs to be gotten rid of because I am young, yet sitting there eating, and not working full timmer he was 17 at the time, not even an adult, granted, my beard made me look like a 25 year old but still, sorry we weren't in factories by 7 years old like back in your day, you geriatric duck. Button seat mentality at white collar office type jobs. If you do your job at a computer there is no reason you shouldn't be able to work from home. 
then attendance is not as important as just getting work done, and it eliminates the need for commuting, which eases traffic and pollution. Edit. Reading through the comments I see there are a lot of people who say they would be less productive because of distractions or whatever, and to that I say I totally agree. I don't work in an office, my wife does which is where this complaint came from, but if I did I would personally benefit from having oversight and lack of distractions. I think the main point I'm trying to make is that not that it should be for everyone but that it should be a valid option for those that would benefit from it. I think even that much would significantly reduce traffic and facility costs. Also I don't claim to know how policies like that are enforced. But I think if your manager is actually doing their job then they should be able to tell who is actually getting work done and who is slacking off. Agree with this as a white collar worker. My staff works from home most of the week. Believe me though, we had a few taking advantage of it when we started it, they're no longer here. That's why a lot of companies are scared of it. I love working in places that aren't afraid to fire people, give people a long leash but let the stupid ones hang themselves with it. Some people think that just because a person looks normal, they don't have a disability and must be lying. Can confirm. Dyspraxic. Incredibly normal looking dunt. People say I just use it as an excuse and that I am quote full of shit so I never tell anyone anymore. Except for right now obviously. Alcoholism being romanticized. No. It's pretty terrible to be honest. I feel like shit today. I want to stop drinking but I know I'm gonna drink more today. R slash stop drinking is a great place. Come visit. It's helped me immensely. If you aren't a criminal you don't need to worry about the cops. And the related you don't need privacy if you've nothing to hide. I used to have this if you have nothing to hide. You have nothing to fear mentality when I was younger. I was so damn stupid. When people post their opinion about something on social media and then say they don't want a debate. People who disagree will be unfriended. Etc. I usually save them the step and delete them. But it still freaks me out that people are that unwilling to disagree, discuss, learn, etc. What's even the point of posting your opinion on a public forum, and then not engaging with it? Because they want to be told that they're right. The customer is always right. Customers are idiots most of the time. Can confirm, I'm an idiot who buys things. The view that you're good enough the way you are, I know that may sound strange. But no one's perfect and we can all change ourselves in a positive ways. This mindset does have its correct uses, such as coming out of an abusive relationship. But more and more I'm seeing it used to justify staying a worse person than who you could be. Edit. Thank you for my first gold and silver. A motivational speaker, IDK who, said that you should never compare yourself to the best, but compare yourself to you from yesterday really changed my outlook on things. If you can't handle me at my worst then you don't deserve me at my best. Sometimes someone's worst is an absolute deal breaker and needing to cut ties and move on doesn't mean that that person doesn't deserve the good things that come from a better relationship. Also, you really have to have a best that is good enough to cancel out your worst for this to even be a mildly appropriate thing to expect. If you throw fit in public but you're stunningly attractive and a genuine, giving, caring, loving, extraordinary person the rest of the time. That's the kind of person this saying was meant for. If you act like a complete douche at your worst, but your best is nothing more than standard human decency, you're asking way too much. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.